protect hands. It's all up to Rick here. He's gonna have to engage. He's gotta go. There's one. Oh, oh, wait. Heal up. 1v1. Oh, oh, Welcome to another FPS Friday edition of Esports in 30. I'm Marissa, that's Zurich. And this past weekend was Suns Out, Digital Guns Out in Anaheim for the CWL. How did you, th you think about that one? Yo, really I can't good. even take credit for that line. That was Nicholas. That was like, Nicholas. That was yeah, straight yeah, up yeah. Nicholas. Really okay. good though, really yeah. good. Excellent, Nick. Kudos well to you. Uh, Derek, I know you watched, so quick yeah. thoughts on the tournament. First of all, I was wrong because <laughs> I called uh, an Optic and 100 Thieves finals because I wanted that to happen. So close. It was so <laughs> close, like one match away, but uh, Gen G pretty much was just like, no, that's ours. Uh, yeah, and I know, it but all we did get the classic phase optic face off. Yeah. Which was fun. Fun. OG scump in there, some pop-offs. Amazing. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's what you like to see. Mm -hmm. I was very surprised with 100 Thieves. I just didn't, I thought, you know what? They had their one off. Like, mm -hmm. they're good. Now the other boys are going to run. They're going to run through and they're going to take what's theirs. No, and I also thought that EU was going to do something here nope. because they were been <laughs> so close for so long. But alas, it was not to be. I actually got to be at the event mm -hmm. just for just for a short while. I wish I could have been there longer, but I had to come back to Toronto to cover the parade because, you know, the Raptors ended up winning the championship. Let's I don't know Raptors. if you guys... I don't know if you guys heard, but like <laughs> Raptors are world champions. Uh, but let's bring it back to COD here because it was definitely an amazing tournament and one that gave us so much to talk about. Thankfully, we have an amazing guest calling in today to talk to us about it while we get Caster Miles Ross on the line. Why don't you check out these highlights? And now Zed, they already have the information. They know he's around house. RCs dies. No one's on bomb. Yeah, honestly, someone can hop it. You just force the bat. Gunfight Zed with the next, and now you can't. You gotta hunt this man down. Flap oh the gun. God. Zed gets the oh, next, and he gets oh, away. Zed! Zed! Let's down, Clayster. You cannot do that. Scump goes in, tagged up, backed up. It's Selian with the cover, and Scump's gonna have to back away Got for the now. Maddox, the Maddox advantage. Scump goes through, and Scump stands. It's a one on one. Uh, it's all uh, left in Bill Belichick's hands. It's all up to Rick here. He's gonna have to engage. He's gotta go. There's one. Oh, oh, wait. Heal up. 1v1. Oh! 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 oh my god. That work is put to good use. He wants tacos! Oh my goodness! Anything when they're peaking, they are gone so quickly. Can DJ trade on the boat? He does. He does. And then he snaps on to a third. What is that, TJ? Clean up the kills at mid map. Uh, see, what in the hell was that? What was that? Scraps just killed everyone on his team and himself. Things will look right over. Looney in a 1v5 spot. He's able to pick up two. Finesse with his life. Oh my god, that's now three in a row. Can Looney pull this off? He's able to get back to full health. They line up in front of him. He's able to dip, dive, and finesse. Okay, and one now five. it's a one versus one. What is this from Looney? He still gets away! 30 seconds now on the clock. The Phantoms versus Looney. Looney waiting. Looney the angle! Looney the 1v5! What is that? Next wave of kills as four go down. Gen G are on the point. Whoa, we got three! You know what that means, friends? It's taco time. I'm fighting to the nail. Now TJ has returned to the other side of the map on a nine spree, eight 10. Finding kills that are insane to see. Of course, invested Envoy's played it so smart. He shuts down Krim. Scum shuts down Mox, but there's 13 seconds. Envoy, all he has to do is play time. He checks the bomb. Scum falls and Gen G do it. 202, 201, a nail biter, Joe. Every, everybody just make it top tier place. Priest up with four in a row. Is that the dagger that they need? Five seconds needed. Can 100 Thieves do it? Nobody there for Gen G, and that's back to back. 100 Thieves are your 2019 CWL Anaheim champs. And there you 
have it, 100 Thieves lift that second trophy high, and this time with Nate Shot in the house. Joining us now to break down the CWL Anaheim, we've got caster Miles Ross. Welcome. Hi guys, thanks so much for having me. We're so freaking happy to have mm -hmm. you. Uh, obviously this whole weekend was hype, but it feels like not too long ago, we were talking about how 100 Thieves was struggling with Pharaoh, and just six months later, they've gone back to back. So break down the importance of Priesta and Crowder, and the, just the growth and success of this team. I know, well they went from a team that couldn't win a hard point map to becoming the very, very best hard point you know, team in the entire world. And I think Priester as a player, he's so fast, he's such an incredibly flexible player. He brought a lot of intensity to the squad, but the biggest change was really Crowder. Crowder as a coach, he's come up with a system which to this day remains a secret to he, obviously the players in a very, very select few. Uh, we may never ever know what he's actually teaching them, but there's a method in which they play hard point, which no one else is really doing right now. And a combination of the skill across that entire team. Finally, they look like the, you know, the sum of their parts, which is really exciting. Uh -huh. mm. in, uh, in, the, in that same vein, Hardpoint, of course, is one of the main uh, uh, modes in competitive COD, but mm -hmm. a lot of people have been talking recently about the importance of SND, Search mm -hmm. and Destroy, to becoming a top caliber team. Mm -hmm. And probably our best example, obviously, is 100 Thieves, because mm -hmm. uh, you know, they just dominate most of their SND, especially in this tournament. Yeah. But what makes a team a good SND team, mm -hmm. and why is this game with such a crucial part of a team's success or failure? Well, Search and Destroy, in Call of Duty, you know, in the CWO, we play best of five series, and Search mm -hmm. and Destroy is the second and the final map in a series. So uh, a lot of teams, you know, if they're not really so solid at Search and Destroy, they end up winning the map on the respawn. So they win the hard point, they win the control, and they win the next hard point. Uh, if you're a great Search and Destroy team, then you can potentially close series out in three. I think in this game in particular, what makes a really, really great Search and Destroy team, of course, individual skills, great. Uh, but especially with teams like 100 Thieves, they've got such a deep playbook now. Players like Crowder and also coaches Crowder. Um, he's really managed to turn that team around against for a squad that struggled a lot in London in Search and Destroy. He's managed to find ways to, and again, this is all secret information that we tried to get out, and we really tried, friends. Uh, he's managed to turn that team around, and again, through just sheer force of will, they've really become an incredible squad. Mm. Do you like that pace change? Because Search and Destroy does not mm. almost feel like a COD mode. Do you know what I mean? Um, so what are your what are your opinions on on uh, that game mode? Because it really truly feels more like a different game, like yeah. CS:GO or R6 yeah. almost. I think it's incredibly um, exciting to watch Search and Destroy. I mean, Call of Duty is such a uh, sort of broad game now to watch. You know, you've got these fast respawn modes like Hardpoint. You've got the control game mode, which is brand new to Black Ops 4, uh, which is kind of a weird hybrid of Search and Destroy and, uh, and and Hardpoint. But for me, Search and Destroy is such an important, you know, piece of Call of Duty. It's where you know the, it's the end of every series. It's like the it's like the defining moment before a trophy is lifted. So I'm a huge fan of Search and Destroy, and I love that pace change, especially as a commentator. Ugh, I agree. It's one of my favorite game modes for sure to watch. Um, Optic Gaming came into this event with the sale of the team to Immortals and still placed third with some, I guess, vintage performances out of Scump for he sure. Do you think Optic came into this event with a little something extra to prove in light of these rumors that they might just be sold off completely? I think more than anything for Optic, it was uh, it was their performance at London that was the driving force behind them, you know, wanting to turn things around here in Anaheim. And you're absolutely right about vintage performances from Scum. I mean, we call him the king for a reason. <laughs> I think that 1v1 against Selium on phase was one of the absolute standout moments of the tournament. It was so exciting to watch in the crowd. I mean, we were about to blow the roof off the Anaheim <laughs> center. It was incredible. I yeah, I, I popped off. That yeah. was that was amazing. <laughs> uh, let's move on to another team because mm -hmm. Genji qualified for the Pro League unsponsored in just a few months. Get themselves second at this tournament. Talk, mm -hmm. us, uh, talk to us about the development of the team, especially following the latest edition of their Star Slayer mm -hmm. Envoy. So it's amazing, you know, Genji, in terms of a squad, they were all relatively unknown players in Call of Duty World War II. They come into this game and they basically set the, they set the bar very, very high for how Black Ops 4 should be played. Um, and Envoy is an addition, you know, he went from, he came from this old Midnight team, which for many, many teams and many players and experts, we deemed Midnight to be one of the best squads in the game by far when it first came out. Uh, so picking Envoy up and adding him in position in, in place of Spacely actually uh, on that Gen G roster, it gave him a lot more firepower that we felt they were missing against these kind of bigger teams like the Optics, 100 Thieves, the Uniteds. And uh, so far, so good. They still have the, the metal to win a championship, but they're not quite there yet. Mm, so close. Um, okay, so when you saw the new NAEU hybrid phase in London, they had just formed and the results clearly spoke of a new team. What growth did you guys see out of them between London and Anaheim and what is their potential with this current roster? 
Oh, the sky is the limit mm -hmm. with this phase roster. They can certainly go all the way. I think the biggest change they made was their search and destroy. Uh, in London, I spoke to Zero Trey Morris, um, who's the ICR player for that team, and I said, hey, man, what's going on with your search? And he was like, I don't know, man. We're just, we're just winging it, and if we can win a map, great. And I was like, that's not really the attitude you want. Again, limited practice and whatnot, but I think the hard point is some of the best hard point in the world. I genuinely believe they are the most exciting team to watch on hard point. So the ultimate matchup for me right now is going to be watching FaZe versus 100 Thieves, and we were sadly robbed of it in Anaheim. But Miami's just around the corner, and I think we may get to see it. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it, COD is always so wild. Oh, um, yeah. uh, a team with a lot of expectation behind them, almost every single event is mm. United, mm -hmm. uh, and this time they didn't quite meet them. Uh, where is the star setted team mentally heading back to the Pro League? Because we could see clear signs of frustration, especially out of uh, Pristini oh, yeah. over there. I think if this is a team that goes through um, incredible peaks and troughs, such highs and lows, and I think uh, between them and their coach, um, it, it's a real introspection. They have to look on themselves, you know, because they're all brilliant players. We know they can go the distance. They've seen second place in London. I think they're incredibly disappointed with the placement in Anaheim. Individual performances aside, everyone looked really strong, uh, but there is just this sort of missing X factor in that squad that it tends to sort of fade out on Sunday, and that's where they really make the, the mistakes. Mm. This squad, there's a lot of soul searching to do before they find that big chip win. It's crazy though, because they went seven and zero in pro league like they're clearly doing something right they've got it together but then when they get to these lands it's like they were so they've been so close so many times i don't i don't get it like the it's land there. I, I just don't understand it's a different environment sometimes yeah. you know mm -hmm. it's not your bed it's not your seats your yeah. setup something about the air something about travel time whatever it may be but at the end of the day it doesn't affect everyone you look at hundred thieves you know they traveled from from all over the place and they just they show off and they take care of business so yeah. it's tricky to call that one you know e united i think again we will be seeing a good performance for them out of An in anaheim but it's hard to call now yeah I and mean, we'll see we'll see you in miami baby mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. okay so reciprocity is a team that I mean, we just, we just don't get it. Dylan can top the stats and leaderboards, and a team can look so good, but they fell way short of the goal yet again in the wake of yet another roster change that replaced Shawnee with Alex. Can you help us understand what is holding back Reciprocity from reaching their actual full potential? So since Reciprocity um, moved Tommy to the bench, they've been going through a bit of an identity crisis. They're not mm. quite sure who should be running the ICR, and they're not quite sure who should be running, you know, the Maddox roles around that one. Um, and that identity crisis brings a lot of confusion in the team. We've seen them messing around with, you know, who's using what specialists as well. I think this is the very first time in a long time that everyone on Reciprocity will be playing the role that they want to be playing. You know, you've got players out of position in the map. As long as they can get some very solid practice in, um, in the cross-divisional play, which we've got coming up in a few weeks, and then, of course, Miami's going to be a huge test for them. Mm -hmm. I genuinely believe that by the time Champs rolls around, you know, that final event in the NA, I think we will see Reciprocity playing much closer towards the potential of that roster as opposed mm -hmm. to where they are now. Yeah, it'd be nice to see. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's move on to another team, uh, Luminosity. Yeah. They were an active player in post Anaheim roster mania, shipping Gunless to Team Envy and yeah. Classic to UIU while adding Brack and Skies. Uh, considering how far they've fallen since their Fort Worth win just three months ago, was this the right move for LG and what will it take for them to recover? Mm. I think this is a great move for LG. I think the addition of um, Brack and, and Skies, two of the most incredibly exciting players to watch right now. Again, like this unknown quantity, players coming out of the Woolwork and Black Ops 4. I'm excited to see how far this squad can go. I think, you know, it, it's interesting to see you've got these three veterans alongside the two new guys, you know, championship winning, you know, players, world champions, if you will, in Luminosity. So I think genuinely this injection of fresh blood of, of you know, really hungry players is possibly the very, very best thing Luminosity could have ever done. Um, I'm excited to see what Gunners can do on Envy, but I think my eyes are more firmly set on what LG can bring now. Mm, yeah, I mean, I love that squad, obviously. Also, Canadian Org, so we've got to support the team. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> two other teams that have made post Anaheim changes are Team Envy and Evil Geniuses, and it was probably needed, to be honest. So walk us through what brought those two squads to this point and the moves they're making to try to return to form. It's a return to form, really. I mean, Envy is a tough one. You know, the bulk of that team were world champions in Call of Duty World War II. So to see them in this uh, in this really difficult spot and a very disappointing performance for them again, they didn't win a single map in Anaheim, and they're currently sitting, I think, at a 13-0 losing streak on Search and Destroy modes. That isn't great. 
disappointing to say the least. Mm. Uh, the journey that Envy have gone through, I think, is very interesting. I think where they're sitting now with Gunless in, in place of uh, Hugh, I think, which is a really interesting sort of not necessarily a trade, but uh, I think it's still going to bring a lot of you know experience and excitement to the team. And I think Gunless is a phenomenal player. I mean, across every single Call of Duty, he has been standout without fail for eg on the other hand i mean i'm just disappointed i, just, I love that squad I, i'm a huge fan of attach i want to see them you know i just want to see them performing more in the pro league they look really good but when it comes to anaheim they're just they're just flat it's just mm. flat i mean i've got to watch every single game win lose or draw and it was just a bit dry so anaheim's going to be huge for them and again the next two weeks of play the most important practice i think they'll ever have Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, we already spoke and touched on a few yeah. of this, but it's COD, so there's always a lot of roster moves. Uh, roster Mania already with 11 of the 16 pro league teams making changes. Yeah. So let's take a second here, maybe like a sentence or two on your thoughts on teams that we haven't uh, covered yet. So yeah. let's start with Hupe to Spice, Splice, okay. sorry, in place of Nolson. What are your thoughts? I think Honestly, I think this is the, the of all the roster moves that's happened, Splice have won. You know, if, wow. if it's a constant who makes a good change and what the intended outcome is, Splice have undoubtedly won roster mania. Puke is one of the best players in the world, bar none. And you put him alongside uh, Temp, who is also one of the greatest players to ever touch the sticks. You know, uh, you know, Donovan touches the top of the damage dealt leaderboards in every single week of the Pro League. He is staggering as an individual, and the rest of that team as well. You know, Looney, Aqua, and Jerd, uh, some of the smartest brains in Call of Duty. I am, oh, I'm terrified at the prospect of this Splice roster. I think they're going to really hurt some teams. Uh, I would love Exciting. to. Say that. Plus, you know, the franchising that means Splice team is coming to Toronto, so it would be wonderful to have Toronto representing in. in such a way. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so massive UIU overhaul. Everyone knew except for Method, so adding Classic, Blast, Phantoms, and Saints. So, like, thoughts on that? I think it's going to be an odd squad. I'm not sure why. I mean, I thought Phantoms was amazing on EG. He was he was a, a real standout player. First time I actually saw Phantoms play was funny enough in Toronto at the uh, World Gaming event not long ago, mm -hmm. and he was a standout player at that event. Um, I'm not quite sure where I sit UIU now. Again, this is mm -hmm. to where we get to this very, very gray area in the middle of the pack when it comes to these team changes, but I think UIU definitely needed a bit of a mix-up. Parzelian is a brilliant player, and again, now I think he's running as a two with Jet Li, looking mm -hmm. for a team themselves, so if anyone's watching, there's a couple of great players there looking for a squad. Um, yeah. I don't quite know where I put UIU yet, and I think the cross-divisional play is going to be an incredible indicator of where I sit them. Well, Methods was very upset uh -huh. after Anaheim, so it's good to see the full switch up there. Um, you just mentioned Jet Li, so mm -hmm. Frost actually leave E6. Uh, Brezzy and Mayhem join. Thoughts? Brezzy, uh, again, an incredible, incredible player. He's had a mm -hmm. fantastic last couple of weeks. He wasn't always on everyone's radar to begin with on Black Ops 4, the young Frenchman. You know, they weren't great in the Overdrive squad, um, but now he's he's looking fantastic and he's super, like, super exciting to watch. I think that squad, again, there's a degree of difficulty with the language barrier because I understand that Brezzy's English is, is, while it is very, very competent in game, I think there's going to be a, a bit of a mishmash out of the match there. With previously, he teamed with his French teammate Whalers. Um, I'm not quite sure what the sort of chemistry or the vibe is going to be like outside of the game for that squad, and I hope it doesn't impact their performance too much. Mm. Uh, Pro League is bound to be insane with so many changes coming through, and we are definitely looking forward to it. Miles, thank you so much for giving us the rundown of everything that happened at CWL Anaheim and since. We'll see you around. Thanks, guys. Uh, bless. So happy we were able to get Miles on the show just to talk about the hype of the event overall, but like also his views on all of these roster moves mm -hmm. because there have been so freaking many. I love how so many players are like in, they're watching, yep. and they're just like, I can't, like it's too stressful. I got to get out. It's very stressful. It's very stressful. You don't know what's going to happen next. You uh, don't know where you're going to be working with, who's going to be your teammates. You know, and the audience, it adds excitement, though. For us, for me, I'm just like, yo, give me that roster mania news. Oh, I want to see what's going to happen next. Give yes. me that tournament. Every tournament is like a different team <laughs> is in it every <laughs> single time. Yeah, it seems that way. But whenever COD does the whole roster mania thing, it's always fun to watch. And you know these boys are just voicing everything they can on mm -hmm. Twitter as well. Like, we're all over it, constantly sipping the tea like, ooh, what's next? I know. Can't wait for Methods to tweet something kind of crazy, which we actually <laughs> we talked about earlier in the show as well. But uh, I'm going to move on here because now that you guys have seen the highlights, you've talked about it, we've talked about it, but we've got something extra special for you because I had a chance to visit the event and figure out what makes CWO Anaheim so iconic. And this is what I found out.
most iconic events in the CWL season takes place right here next to Disneyland in Anaheim, California. But there ain't no ride in Disneyland that'll top a Call of Duty land. Am I right? Let's go. Looney CWL Anaheim is considered to be one of the most iconic CWL events of the year. Why is that? I think it's just the atmosphere. The fans come out here, they're loud. They get loud out here. And I don't know, I think it's just being in Cali. Everyone loves being in Cali. It's a reason to be on vacation to Cali, so I think that's why it gets that much prestige. And honestly, personally, this is the event I would want to win. Well, it just kind of became known early on. It's been a flagship in the Call of Duty community, and it became known early on as like the big event each year, and it's just always so hype. Everyone loves to be here in Anaheim. You know, Anaheim is the biggest Call of Duty event uh, out the year, and it's been like that over like the last six years. It's on the West Coast, it's the only West Coast event we have, have throughout the year, but all the major content creators come out, all the players come out, and this has just been iconic. You know, about eight years ago, I placed top eight for the first time in Anaheim, in this venue. It wasn't for Call of Duty, but it, it still holds a special place in my heart as well. It's just the fans. I mean, the space in here is incredible. All the partners that contribute, the sponsors, and so many passionate supporters come out here to root for their favorite teams, and that's what makes it uh, iconic every single time. Well, it's had a really rich history, and it actually started back in 2005. Before it was specifically just for Call of Duty, there were a lot of events that were hosted by MLG here. So over the years, it's not just the COD community. It's been League of Legends. It's been Hi Halo. It's been StarCraft. So all of these people know this event as a place to gather as an esports community. And now that it's evolved into Call of Duty, I think it's only made that bigger and better. But it has a really, really rich history. 100 Thieves go back to back. 100 Thieves are your 2019 CWL Anaheim champs. Oh yeah, CWL Anaheim was just such a good time overall. Amazing experience, fantastic tournament, so well organized. Um, it was just so impressive. Everything about mm -hmm. it was so impressive from the second you walked into those doors. And I know, just like Katie was saying, it's an iconic place because so many other esports have actually been there as well. It's just mm -hmm. a, it's a place that everyone loves to go to. Uh, yeah, like Disney Round is a, Disneyland is around the corner for sure, but like mm -hmm. it's the fact that everyone is there congregating, all the players hang out at the hotel uh, late at night as well. Like after partying. all partying after the tournaments are over, they go they hit the restaurants and they come back to the actual hotel and just hang out in the bar. Everybody knows it, all the fans know it. Mm -hmm. So they all hang out there as well and they just get to like meet them and chat with them. It's just such an inclusive experience for the scene and I'm so happy happy that I got to experience it and I feel like I've made you a little bit jelly oh, at yeah. this point in time. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just like, man, I wish like, I could yeah, party sure. with pros. I love partying yeah, with pros. The, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's basically it, but I feel like even a lot of those tweets after two with the players like were relating to where there were sub tweets about things that were going on at mm -hmm. the hotel between like players, maybe girls, maybe bros, like who knows? I just love, it, like who knows? Because COD just gives us all of that, right? That's why the scene is so special because there, there really is no filter on it. Mm -hmm. And we feel like we're a part of that family. And I did talk to Katie about that as well when we were just chatting there and even uh, with Jess too, like the girls there are so welcome and warm and and all the casters as well like everybody wants they just want us all to feel like we're a part of the family one big and hot family one big hot family mm -hmm. and we kind of are even though you and I are just kind of separated up here in Canada <laughs> or it's okay like, <laughs> we're always separated out here in Canada it's true it's not the way she goes but we do have that championship now world champions that's right I'm just gonna that's bring right. it back but, to the world but champions. Um, how, how do you think does the the COD scene compare it, it, to like the yeah. other scenes that you've done because you've yeah. done other scenes right so like how was the atmosphere compared you know for example like this CSGO, the PUBG tournaments, like how, like uh, what is the difference, the main difference that you notice? Uh, it's tough to say with CSGO, CSGO is just completely different vibe altogether because I feel like it's just longer running, long standing. Um, longest you know, of all time. Longest of all time, plus like it's PC versus console and I feel like there's still a difference when it comes to mm -hmm. temperament with those types of gamers. I just like, you, it's just a different vibe that you get from each scene. Um, and uh, I mean of course Rocket League, like covering Rocket League is vastly <laughs> different because there's so many minor <laughs> Yes. in that scene you kind of have to like watch what you say and like there's not really it's drinking kids. loud but it's like if you see someone drinking do you tell on them but you don't want to be a narc mm -hmm. so it's like mm -hmm. it's always like I'm walking on eggshells in the Rocket League scene versus the COD scene where there's just like free flowing everywhere like I saw J Cap just out there who's going for dinner and I was walking with my husband and I'm like I'm like you he's like what I'm like listen we have beef because all you guys do is spoil Game of Thrones on Twitter like you don't care 
And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 we'll listen. Like, we had a full discussion about it. Like, mm -hmm. they're just they're just awesome dudes. They're honest. Mm -hmm. They're sweet. Um, and, like, they're just bros. And I love being a part of that scene, too. I, I love that they make me feel like I'm a part of the scene, too, even though, like, I'm totally not. I'm just this, like, white girl from Canada who, like, thinks she knows what she's talking about, but she don't. Um, but that's, that's but, part of it. That is esports, though. A lot yeah. of a lot of people always get so um, caught up with the, with the intimidating yeah. uh, part of, of being part of the scene because like true. when you see these guys like especially when you play against them yeah. it's, so it's so intimidating their skill is so much higher than yours and you don't <laughs> know why right but when you talk to them in person they are really just like you like yeah. they are just regular gamers they watch anime they watch yeah. Game of Thrones you know like but and spoil Game of Thrones yeah and they spoil Game of <laughs> Thrones but they're all just like regular dudes and they just hang out and they're just you know I but know. but in game you're just like you know like I don't want to I don't want to yeah. mess with these guys because oh, they're no. so intimidating well that, that's the thing too is that they're so serious it was actually very difficult to get players to do interviews on site because mm -hmm. they're so serious about playing and focused and staying in game they stick with their team constantly they go yeah. for strats they're always working so you don't want to take them out of that as well right so there's still a lot of professionalism there and they're so serious about what they do and I applaud them so much but I do want to just bring it quickly here before we go to CSGO we did mention mm -hmm. it but it's a 20th anniversary we said longest standing it I is know. a 20th happy anniversary birthday. of CSGO so we say happy is it happy birthday happy, happy anniversary birthday. we didn't get a cake for you uh, we apologize <laughs> for that but I know like CSGO is up there with your I feel like it it's close to your number one to watch you you love yeah it. I yeah. love watching CSGO that ESL Pro League is happening right now mm -hmm. and it's uh, there's already been some hype matches but but I've been playing this game for so long, 1.5, when I was like, I don't know, 8 or 9, I would sneak <laughs> out of my, my older cousin had the game and my parents didn't allow me to play it because I was too young yeah. and there was violence involved. Yeah. And I would sneak out of my room at night and I would try to play on my, my cousin's laptop and that was like the birth of my, yeah. my very, one of my very first games that I played actually ever in my life was oh CSGO like 1.5. Uh. And oh, and they brought back Dust 2 in the rotation of the current uh, in CSGO right How now. How wonderful, It's right? pretty crazy. It looks, celebrate. It looks so potato though, that's the thing. <laughs> it's like, if you're, so it switches between rounds mm. uh, and how they designed the level as they put the new one underneath the old one. So mm. as you're going from round one to two, it like switches back and forth between the two different levels but yeah. the older dust suit does not look did not age well like it <laughs> looks potato that is so potato that's but what it's i call nice. my brother's personality <laughs> but it's nice nostalgia yeah, is nice it, no for sure and like mm -hmm. csgo is that scene that gave me life like it gave me life in esports is the first scene that i ever covered it brought me into this world and what a world it is mm -hmm. so to all the casters to all the players to all the people living that life we say happy anniversary to you happy CSGO birthday in csgo in general and uh, that's it, Zurich. We gotta go. It's the end of the show. Thank you so much to Miles for calling in. Thank you, Jess Looney, Guy Blaze, for speaking with me, and CWL, and so many more. And of course, thank you for watching. Next week, we'll back with more Squad. Until then, hit us up on all our socials at Squad State. Have an amazing weekend.